The Ahsoka series is well and truly bedded in now, and we're a couple of weeks out from the release of Disney's new and updated Ahsoka Legacy lightsabers. Upsettingly, I fell for Shop Disney's pre-order garbage, so I'm here waiting for at least another month for my shiny new lightsabers to arrive. But that's not going to keep me down. Does the world need another Ahsoka Tano lightsaber review? Probably not. But strap in, because here's one coming. Welcome back to The Order, where we talk about all things awesome and collectible. Today, we're going to take a look at the Ahsoka Tano Force Effects Elite lightsaber from Hasbro's Black Series. This is modelled on Ahsoka's first lightsaber, as seen in the Clone Wars, and for a lot of fans, this design of saber has more of a sentimental attachment than the Rebels or Live Action series. We'll take a look at the packaging, what you get in the box, and of course, the functions on this saber itself. And hopefully by the end of the video, I'll have helped you work out whether this is a saber you need, or possibly not. As ever, if you enjoy this video, it would be amazing if you could leave a like and subscribe. Help a veteran get a warm meal. Let's get in. Starting off with the packaging, Hasbro have done a really good job with the design on their Force FX Elite line, and this saber is no different. The box has a sort of jagged shape to it, which might be inspired by the kind of cracks and grooves of a kyber crystal, but that might be my drink talking. The front has this really nice image of Ahsoka and this lovely artwork, and then on the back, we have a better picture of the lightsaber itself with some hints about the various functions. Inside, of course, you get Hasbro's Force FX Elite stand, which is really nice and has the sort of Imperial wall panel design to it. This stand looks loads better than the stand offered by Disney with their equivalent bundles, so this is a win for Hasbro. Of course, you also get the hilt, the blade, and as an extra perk, you get this little kyber crystal. The first thing to notice is this is a single saber box set, which seems mental. Ahsoka is a dual wielding saber user, always has been, but Hasbro decided that they weren't going to release this with a Shoto hilt, for reasons only Hasbro know. I'll be honest, I think that in itself is almost a killer reason not to pick this up because it is effectively an incomplete set. But anyway, the hilt design is pretty nice, it's very faithful to the Clone Wars design, I mean, it's fairly hard to go wrong with this, it has a sort of nice brushed aluminium to it, it's really really light. There are two buttons, so you've got a button here and then a button here in this control box. Now, I would say naturally you'd assume this large sort of copper coloured one would be the ignition button, but <laughs> not for Hasbro. Hasbro decided that the ignition button should be here in this control box. Ordinarily, big fan of a push button ignition. Disney, I mean the Disney Sabres I've complained quite a lot that the things that would make them better would be push button rather than a light switch type effect. But here Hasbro have made the kind of guard around the control box and the button itself so narrow. I mean my fingers aren't that fat. I can't I can't get to it. It's madness. You even with my little with my little pinky finger, it's just What were they thinking? It's not it's not button shaped, it's not They've put a guard around it, which makes it, and you can see there, ever so slightly. I think we can get it. To, there we go. You can see it's raised on either side, which, if they just left those raised bits off, it probably would have been okay, but because they've done that, it makes it really hard to press. Frustrating. I'll come on to the electronics in a minute, but finishing off on the design front, I think broadly speaking, this, this does look really, really good from a display point of view. I think they've mirrored the design very well. You've got the legalese on the bottom here, which is relatively well hidden. It's a bit more in your face than when Disney do it. The thing that surprised me with both this and its legacy cousin from Disney is just how light this saber is. It's really, really comfortable in the hand, very, very easy to spin around, and overall quite well done, though there is a bit of a risk that the lightness to it almost makes it feel a bit too much like a toy. Down here you've got the thicker pommel section and this kind of girthier section which, which is in tow with how her lightsabers looked in the series. To access the power pack, it's nice and straightforward. You just go through the pommel at the back and you've got this kind of almost chunkier version of, of the Disney equivalent really. So, double A batteries, nice and simple and that goes in again and away you go. Let's take a look at the other functionality with this and in particular inserting the blade. And this is where I'm definitely going to play favourites and I really don't want to do a negative review but this is where I love the Legacy line far more than the Hasbro Force Effects line. To get into this thing as a start you have this weird kind of cap section which you have to unscrew and I've pre-unscrewed this but 
that was right the way down and you can see how deep that goes down in the treads and to get that out is pretty unwieldy this has got to come back on as well before I stick a blade in let's take a look at this lovely kyber crystal so plain Jane now you can see there it's got these connectors on the bottom which are going to line up it has the same insertion design with these teeth it's again very similar to the legacy line I promise I will stop connecting them so you stick it in push down and twist and there you go so now all I have to do is get that ignition done no, come on. Come on. Okay, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> That's that. Now, the box leads me to believe that this is going to be lit up once it comes out. So, should we take a look? So push it in. And twist. And kind of lit up. Maybe it looks better in the dark, hang on. Uh, yeah, better in the dark, but I mean, I'm now just sat in darkness. <laughs> it's okay, it's, it's you know, wouldn't be buying it just for this, that's for sure. But it's a nice little novelty. Well done, Hasbro. So let's take a look at the ignition. The blade is almost plug and play, uh, almost very, very nearly. It's similar in design to the Disney ones. It's got the two teeth, you lock it in place, you twist it. Great, it's locked in. Finished, right? Ready to play? No, because you have to put this end cap back on and this slides over the blade, which is okay, except definitely feels like you're going to scratch the blade up and you only get one blade and they are unique, I believe. And then you've got to screw this back on. We're going to need these tiny little spaces on either side that you're really going to be able to get any purchase on. So happy days. Anyway. So once that's on, then you need to ignite this sucker and you've already seen the problems I've got with that so let's try it and see if I can do it in one go oh there we go so I'll show you in the dark in a second but looks pretty good even in this lighting and in fairness that's picking up mm, not everything but it's not bad the cool thing about this saber is it has these extra features and that's where the copper button comes in so when you've got the blade ignited you have the clash effect when you hit the blade and you know, they're, they're all fine but you also have these extra electronic functions where if you tap the copper button it does a sort of blast deflect a little bit like a neopixel would and when you do that different parts of the blade will go white so the leds are changing color when you're doing that to almost reflect the blaster hitting it if you hold the button down it'll do a sort of tip drag mimicking effect which isn't perfect because it goes a bit too high up the blade but it's still you know it's still okay it's a nice feature to have and it's certainly that's where as much as I've grumbled and said that the Disney Saber has got better this that and the other today from that functionality the Hasbro wins out every time even in terms of the blade I think the blade is a bit smoother as well let's talk about the hidden features or the extra features which are once you've got this sucker ignited which Ah, there we go. So, if I hold the ignition button and the copper button at the same time, this will change colour. And there you go. Now I have Ahsoka's green blades, just like the ones that were given to her by Anakin, because in the Clone Wars TV series, she started off with blue, and then Anakin gave her this set, and they're green. So, it's not exactly easy. I've been able to do that because I'm holding this two-handed. If you want us to do the color changing one-handed, oh, you see there, it's it's not registering. It's trying to do the tip drag because it's not registering the fact that I'm pressing the ignition button. So even there, it's not smooth. Okay, you can't really tell in this light, but that has changed it to the third color, which is yellow. One thing you may or may not have noticed there is there's no change to the sound fonts when you change the colours. The reason I bring it up is because she definitely had different sounding blades in the TV series and also this is where the Galaxy's Edge one does have a different sound font. So I'm aware that this hasn't been my most positive review and I really like doing positive reviews but Hasbro have let themselves down here in my opinion. For now, there we have it. The Hasbro Force Effects Elite Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars lightsaber. The original retail was $250 and you can pick it up for about the same price now. Is it worth it? Probably not. 